Okay. Uh, uh, climbing groups. Uh, were introduced uh, at the end of last century. Sorry, you cannot hear? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Ah. No, maybe I put it closer, no? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No? okay. Well, like many things in, in mathematics were introduced by Poincaré. As monotopy groups of second order differential equations, very much in the spirit of previous talk by Camacho, you know, of a uh, Riccati equations or things like that. And of course they have been incredibly rich because of the following facts. So what's a Kleiner group, classical Kleiner group? So we take the, the ribbon sphere and we consider the group of order morphisms of the Riemann sphere. And then we have this remarkable fact that this is three things at the same time. is the group of Moebius transformations or which is PSL2C. It's a set of conformal maps from the Riemann sphere and therefore automatically every conformal transformation of the sphere extends as a uh, isometry of the Poincaré space, which preserves the orientation. And therefore, for this reason, climate groups are connected with tangible spaces, Riemann surfaces, automorphic forms, uh, automorphic forms, etc. Uh, what's a Kleinian group? Kleinian group is the following. So we, we define a, a special set of the, of the, of the so we take a, a subgroup of this group and we say that gamma has the Kleinian property. It exists an open set, right, which is equal to a certain set called the Leibniz set and lambda is the set of cluster points of every orbit. But this uses special properties of the conformal geometry. So if omega is not empty, we say that this group class that has the, the, the Kleiden property. And uh, the object of this talk is the following, is generalize this construction or study complex Kleiden groups. in higher dimension. So what do I mean by that? I mean the following we consider projective space of dimension n, this, this time n greater than 1, and we know that the group of, of holomorphic automorphism of Pn is simply PSL n plus 1c, and we, what we want to study is subgroups that have the climbing property, namely that have an open set of discontinuity to analyze its properties, etc. And to give examples, study dynamically ergodically, yes? I know why today we like this condition, but why did Poincaré introduce it? Why did he want to consider it? Because that was the monodromy of differential equations, like the hypergeometric equation, the Riccati equation, etc. And he realized that holonomy, exactly like a match was studied. Why would it? Because this is the limit set of the foliation given is exactly, the, uh, the limit set of the foliation in the sense of Camacho is exactly that. But I don't think he was not thinking in. In, in modern terms, in terms of uniformization of the thing, or quasi fuxian or the things we are thinking today. And so he divided very democratically into two parts, which is a circle, circle, which he called fuxian, and the other ones he called Kleinian, divided into pieces. So the object is exactly now to generalize that construction, to study. But of course, this has been studied. For instance, consider the following situation. Consider the group of unitary transformations on Cn plus 1 is simply linear transformations that preserve the following form quadratic form well that's a, 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 a Lorentz-like group it's the analog of the complex Lorentz group 
And then, of course, you can always projectivize this group. And therefore, this group will act on projective space, Pn. But it's clear that a set like that, the set of all points in projective space, whose homogeneous coordinates satisfies this inequality, is by holomorphic to a ball. And they exist, in particular, when n equals 2. It's these beautiful examples of manifolds, uh, for instance, algebraic surfaces covered by the ball, satisfy the inequality by that. And, for instance, have been recently studied by Denis Mostov. And they contain already for the case n equal to, so you have projective space, and you have a copy of the ball here, the round ball, and there are discrete groups that are here, the questions are beautiful, and for instance, you can generalize things like hypergeometric function, etc., and have been studied by Lorichella, uh, etc. It's very, very rich. Okay, so. Uh, a function, it's, uh, I call it the function complex analog. Okay, so it's very. So these are algebraic construction due to Borel, but they come from long time, no? uh, the, the beginning of the century. Paul Appel, there's Appel in. Because, you know, it's beautiful. So, what I want to study is to analyze these things, no? So, what about constructing some new ones? Well, already there's a. There's an obvious construction, which is the following. You take C2, and you think of the horizon in P2, so that's the line at infinity. And then suppose you have here a climbing group at a point A, acting. And suppose you can, so you have a group gamma in PSL2C, and that acts at infinity. This is projected space. And you ask whether it comes from a linear action. And there's a small obstruction, which is like a Schur multiplier, it's a called beautiful theory, which is not part of my talk, I just mentioned. And then, if this group actually lifts to SL2C, well, it would act on lines, permuted lines, and the action of infinity will be the climbing group. And therefore, you have a domain of discontinuity will be what? Well, here's the, at infinity, the region of discontinuity. And this will be simply a line bundle. Omega will be a line bundle over. Uh, so, in other words, that would be a little bit like cheating, no? So I want real examples where I can study the dynamics. I can determine also the quotients, that's important. Okay, so I will make three constructions of, uh, of climbing groups. So let's one. So the first construction will be a two-historical construction. Okay, so before doing that, let me just mention one small point is that these continuity sets and limit sets in the non-conformal case are rather subtle things to do. And I will give a definition due to Rabi Kulkarni just to fix notation and to express correctly what, I, what I'm talking about, of what do I mean by uh, this continuity set and limit set. So suppose you have a topological space, which is locally compact, and let's say with a countable base, and you have a group acting here. Well, we say that the action is properly discontinuous, the usual definition, if for every pair of compact sets, let's say A and B, well, the cardinality of gamma such that, that that is not empty is finite. So this is the usual definition of properly discontinuous. But what do I mean by the limit set? You need a special feature of that. Well, the definition is the following. You take first L0 of the group as the set of cluster points is the closure of the set of cluster of, of of, uh, point of, uh, of points of X with infinite isotropy. OK, 
Okay, run from x, you suppress this set. It's the closure of a set of points like that, or it's a closed set, or this is an open set. And now you take from this the set of all points of the form gamma x, where x belongs to this set, and gamma belongs to, to the group. You take the set of all accumulation points of that, you call that L1. Now you suppress L1, and I'm going to draw trouble because I tell you it's, not, it's subtle the definition. You see, have the bad, the bad uh, 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 manners of having non-household non quotients. And that's why I'm giving this definition very quickly. So now you suppress the two sets. And now you suppress all cluster points of closed sets of the form where gamma varies in gamma and k is a compact set in this. Okay? And now you call the limit set of gamma the union of these three sets. Okay, that's the definition. So that will be for us the definition of limit set. And you have to go into that table because, as I tell you, it's rather subtle. There's a paper by Kulkarni uh, about that point. What's L1? L1 is the set of all accumulation of all orbits which for points. So first you suppress all points with infinite isotropy. Take the closure of that. Take what remains. Take the set of all cluster, po cluster points of, of an orbit. Just, just like, the, just like the, Klein, Klein, uh, the standard classical case. Suppress that closed set. See what remains. Take all, take, take all possible cluster points of compact sets. In, once you remove these two sets, what remains is a closed set. is the union of L0, L1, and L2. But I don't want to lose time, time with that. What remains, well, L is called the limit set. What remains is the discontinuity set. And the theorem of Kulkarni says that on this set, Gamma acts properly discontinuously in such a way that the quotient is Hausdorff. You have a good projection map. Look, and in the case of manifolds and the differential reaction, the natural quotient map between omega is an orbital covering, and you have the beautiful things that you had in the previous case. But that's not so. That's what I'm going to that. So I'll forget about it very quickly to give you a precise definition. So. Well, there's a beautiful way to have Klein and actions in P3 the following way. So you consider S4 with a standard, so now I go slower, now that I finish that, you take S4 with the round metric, standard metric, and you consider now the, the two-story space is the set of all almost complex structures That's the frame bundle of S4, and you divide by E2. And the remarkable fact of twist of theory is that this space is actually P3. So the set of almost complex structures at a point, compatible with the orientation and the metric, is actually isomorphic to a sphere S2. We have a natural projection. It was also due to Hopf, etc., but this historical construction is more modern.
to a line, not only isomorphic to a line, but it's like a rule, threefold, beautiful, filled with two ones. However, it's not holomorphic for four with have a complex structure. But each is a P1. Is that if you take the group of conformal transformations which preserve the orientation of S4, which of course we can identify as the group of isometries of hyperbolic which preserves the fibers. And, uh, and the Novo Civis School and the a projective action, that's what. But now it's beautiful because we now have a scenario that are Complex structure here, and you apply F up to scale. It's clear how to do beautiful way to do that. The following: we remember all of us all in our topology. We remember that H4 is simply the projected space. It's a line, but over this Q field of Pachyonians, right? That's a classical thing of topology we have learned. And therefore, what is that? We take well, we take the quaternionic plane. Of course, H is identified R4, so this. And now we consider this. Uh, you take all, the set of all right quaternionic lights. Multiply on the right. Okay? And this, uh, this is S4, and the group is in lines for A, B, C, turns, right? But act on the left, be careful not to make it, not, don't be dyslexic, not don't turn one, one, you know, one like that, one clockwise, another clock, counterclockwise. And then this is a map, in, and any conformal map is given that way, and the two twists. Actually, this is another would be sequel. Exactly the same way as the Moebius transformation that we know from complex variables, except being careful to put the coefficients on the left. That's a description, and we have this. Uh, Let's, let's see what happens if
No, I'm, I'm doing a mess out of this. told you how to lift maps. So the leaded set of the lift loop is exactly P minus 1 of lambda, where P is the, is the uh, Okay. The first observation, if gamma is pi 1 of a 3 manifold, M3 compact, well, I simply consider this, this is a S4, and I consider here a totally geodesic subspace of dimension 3, and take a group that acts there, and then I claim the action is not minimal. You see, one property of the classical Kleiner groups is that the group acts minimally on the limit set. I claim that this case doesn't act minimally, and the reason is very beautiful because it uh, has to do with super minimal surfaces. Is the following: is you can assume without loss of generality that therefore the bound. So this is an H3 embedded in H5. The boundary is a round sphere, but I want this round sphere to be uh, a maximal sphere, namely a geodesic, totally geodesic sphere. And now this is an S2, right? And this S2 has a canonical lifting to the twist to space, a beautiful object, twist to space, Penrose. The Fubini study metric is actually a holomorphic contact structure, exactly like the S3 fiber over S2, and it's a, 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 it's a holomorphic distribution, actually. And therefore, given, given, given this surface, S2, can be canonically lifted, how? You see, you have a little plane here, oriented plane, there's a canonical complex structure, multiply in the sense of the orientation by I is rotate by I, rotate by compatible with the orientation in the orthogonal two plane, and therefore there's a canonical way to lift a, a, a sphere to a curve, it's called a legend, legend lifting, but if this sphere is totally geodesic, this curve leads to an S2, but not any stupid S2, leads to a line P1. But how does that, that mean in terms of the action? That means that actually gamma tilde acts on, therefore this image in this particular case becomes S2 cross P1, because it's the, P, the parent's vibration is trivial over, over, over this S1, and the action is just a product because there's a, almost co it's a complex structure. And so, you see already there's a difference with the classical case. A uh, complex Kleiner group in higher dimension does not necessarily act minimally on the minimal set. But now, what happens now if I take the following thing? So that's number one. Now suppose, for the moment, the gamma is now the fundamental group of a four manifold, always compact, Okay, although I can say complex, uh, complex or compact, blah, 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 take it compact. And now, theorem, well, uh, it's part of the theorem already. Now the action is minimal. The action of the lift of gamma tilde is minimal. So already there's a big difference. So in this case, what we have is the following. So we have here the fundamental group acting in H5. This is a hyperplane, canonically included here. And I take this, the fundamental group acting here. Now the boundary is an S3. What lies above this in the, in the twist of vibration is S3 cross P1. But I can now react. So let me prove that, because I think the, the proof is very nice. Suppose the action is not minimal. So let H be a minimal set.
of reaction of gamma in lambda of gamma tilde can be trivialized to be S3 cross P1. Excuse me? It's acting, it's leaving this hyperplane invariant, okay, acting obviously in H5. And I look at the action now, I lift it to projective space, I want to see whether it's minimal or not. Now, any minimal set, they always is Came the following is H, it's a locally trivial fiber bundle. And this is uses a, the following. Okay, the following name is the following. Suppose you have a minimal, a, a minimal action of a group in a compact space. Well, let me call this G. So let G act minimally on the compact metric space X. Suppose now you have an extension of this action. Namely, you take a product X cross Y, and you have an extension, our skew product of that one, of the form, following form, so gamma of x, y will be, is given by a co-cycle, so will be given by gamma of x, f of gamma x, y. So every extension, this satisfies the co-cycle uh, condition to be an extension. But suppose that this is by isometries. That's the only condition. Then I claim that any minimal set is a homogeneous space. So now let K be a minimal set. Then, if I restrict the projection onto the first factor to X, the result this is a locally trivial vibration. Not only that, the fibers are homogeneous. Namely, the group of isometries has transitively on on the fiber. Does that, does that classify all the homogeneous cases? Oh, excuse me? Does that classify all the homogeneous cases? Did you get them all that way? Mm, no, well, I'm not sure. But here, here you see, I'm, I'm assuming only the following. So it's acting by isometers on the fiber. And take a minimal set, I claim it's a totally, and that you can imagine the proof, how it goes. You take a fiber, I do it with my hands. You take a fiber. Suppose you want to, to prove that this fiber is homogeneous. Take any point in this fiber. What we're going to do is very simple. We're going to take house of limits with respect to the house of the metric of orbits. So, take a point in this fiber. The first observation is that this set H projects through J. Action on X is minimal. So, this minimal set touches every fiber. So, first lemma. It could be empty. Now take any, take this fiber, take any point in this fiber, and take a sequence of points. I mean, I know that this point, uh, I know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the action is, uh, H is minimal by hypothesis. So there's an orbit that approaches this point. Now take the house of limit of that. I claim that the house of limit is exactly the whole fiber. Because if it was bigger, is it clear? No. You agree? Thanks. It's beautiful, no? I mean, it's an exercise. It's an exercise. It's like, like, like I do like, I do, I, I do like, uh, like an exercise. Number one, it's homogeneous. You agree? So every fiber is homogeneous. Second, it depends continuously, this fiber depends continuously on the, on the base point. It has to be semi-continuous and continue, otherwise you have a bigger fiber, you propagate by isometries. And I leave you as a beautiful exercise. I use continuously and I just prove that it's homogeneous, it's homogeneous. But in this case, 
I told you that the action on the fibers on the crystal quantity is by isometries, namely by SO3. So I have this action on S4, this invariant is fever S3, and it acts by isometries on S2. No, in this particular case, my cycle F gamma X belongs to SO3. You are rem reminded of the group of isometries of a compact space by Arsenas Poli is always compact. Well, what are the yeah, I take I take this homogeneous space of SO3, I take a connected component, what could it be? The whole sphere, I'm done, minimality, a circle or a point. Suppose it's, suppose it's a circle. And remember all these circles are isometric. Take the center point. Well, there are two center points. What does that mean? That means that this action preserves an almost complex structure. That's because the twister space is the set of all almost complex structures. So therefore I have an action here that preserves an almost complex structure. Now I structure associated. Oh, okay, so I have here S3. A, 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 a section of almost complex structure is invariant of the action. I take the I take field of planes invariant by gamma. The action is conformal, so I take the perpendicular. I have an invariant line field under the action of ad infinity, under the action of the action of, uh, of isometries, the proof of most of rigidity theorem, or many other many other arguments that I can give you twenty imply contradiction. So this is really canonical way to to prove it. Okay, now so there's in cases the action is minimal, some cases not. But actually, you can construct the actual sort of the, the patrus of solid and and do a dictionary. So let me let me tell you what it is. And sometimes will be ergodic, sometimes. So now consider. Always have in mind the Penrose, the Calabi Penrose vibration of complex. I told you to take the horizontal distribution. Right? And given, a, given any conformal structure on the sphere, there's a canonical lifting, which is an nice particular now, if you take a, a Kleinian group acted on S4, well, on the actual at infinity of a, group, a discrete sum of, of isometries of H5, I take the limit set, and then there is this family of measures constructed by Sullivan, by Patterson and Sullivan, which are conformal densities for each y in H5, and there is an obvious measure to give which one. Is the disintegration of the pattern is the measure that and is the pullback of the pattern solvent measure in the whole now we may ask whether this measure is ergodic or not well in this first example with this says 2 and not S3 it's obvious that the measure is not ergodic because the action is a product right so what I'm taking here is simply the Fubini study metric on the vertical fibers and the patterns and solvent measure, measure on it but I claim now that for this second example, the patterns and solvent measure that I so I just call these measures horizontally conformal basis. The same thing. In this time they are not ergodics. And the proof is the following. Suppose the action I do it with my hands again. I, I could leave it as an exercise. Okay. Really it said we know. The set of all twisted fibers over this S3. Now, suppose you can separate into two pieces, which are disjoint, invariant under the action, and both of positive measure. So now I have a bunch 
of, of almost complex structures. One, take another one, take a couple of almost, almost complex structures, right? Let me, I better write that. So, theorem. Let me, let me see the theorem. If for the fundamental group of a four manifold, this is the theorem. So suppose now that you actually can divide in two, two disjoint pieces of positive dimensions. Now we remember that these are almost complex structures, right? You take a fiber, take a couple x, y on the fiber. What are they? They are. You have two almost complex structures, right? You divide the twist of space into two pieces. Well, now you do the same for here. I mean, one observation is an almost complex structure on the sphere is the equivalent to giving a hyperplane, a two, a two plane. So two almost complex structures here are equal if and only if the, uh, the planes are the same thing. So now I have a bunch of planes. And therefore, what do I obtain at the end? It's a family of lines, two families of lines of positive dimension, and that's incompatible with the, the ergodicity for each of the orocyclic flow because of the following reason. So I have here the sphere S4. Okay. So an almost composite structure, here I have S3. Okay, take a point here. And I, I'm assuming that the twist of fiber here, you see by Fubini, I'm explaining this very badly. But you do the following though. Well, let me, let me go to another thing better, because this is, but anyhow, it's a theorem, okay? So I go slower. What do I need? I need circles, right? But how do I construct a circle? I need how to reflect. to n plus 1. And you take two copies of Pn, which are disjoint. So this is L and this is M. Which both, both are linear, linear projectives of spaces isomorphic to Pn. And now there's an obvious involution. You can give it in coordinates the following way. You take C, C, C to n plus 2, divided in, into coordinates, homogeneous coordinates, x0, xn, y0, yn, call this x, y, and there's a natural involution that intersections x with y. So, like at the end, you have two subspaces of, 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 of dimension n, and there's a projective linear transformation which is involuntary. Okay. And T of L is equal to M. There are infinitely many of those, right?
So, what is the, the, what, what is the, the circle, the mirror in which we are going to reflect? Well, it's a set of all points whose homogeneous coordinates satisfy this inequality, this equality. What happens when you homogenize that? Well, we have the which in very fancy names is, uh, names is called n plus 1 of O Pn. Now n times, n plus 1 times the hot bundle over Pn. Right? You take a tubular neighborhood of that, and what remains is a tubular neighborhood isomorphic to that one. And this, this head is obviously fixed. It's a homogeneous polynomial. So it goes to the quotient, and it simply goes as the boundary of the tubular neighborhood for L or of P. Right? Consider this circle. I can do better. Little circles, big circles, the joint. Following transformation. That but now I have a tiny a tiny cube and a big cube. Okay? And I have an involution. Okay, let's think of that for a moment. And the only thing we have done is this. So it's false that that doesn't exist in higher dimension. This is one of infinity, and the other is zero. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is the. Well, a one over set on mu is a unit circle. The centers of the circles and lambda is the radius of the of the circle. So now the theorem is the theorem. Let me see if I can write one theorem completely. The theorem. So let L1, M1, LR, MR be pairs of piecewise disjoint, of pairwise disjoint. Copies of the uh, subspaces of dimension n dimension n of an odd dimensional projective space okay so I have let me draw some I have pairs Which I paint the same color if you permit me to do so. No, I think. Well, they are disjoint. Okay. They are. Then, there exist involutions. T1. Here, of course, are greater than one. Otherwise, no. Yet, then there is involutions ti. So the square is identity. They intersect the pairs. Inter they can interchange. So ti of li equals mi. Using an intelligent choice of lambda for each pair. The mirror choppy no. 
which is a well-defined object. Then we have a beautiful set of involutions. Now the claim is the following. The group generated by the TIs is this group. But I want to say more. I want to say exactly what it is, the quotient, the limit set, and the whole world. And I want to know whether they have moduli. So to make up Fibers over Pn with fiber the limit set. In fact, lambda gamma is a union of copies of uh, subspaces, uncountably many, obviously, Cantor said, subspaces of dimension P, of dimension N. So, well, that's, that, that describes it. That Okay, so you have a, a these two, interchanges these two, interchanges these two, and there is solution. exactly the shot. Notice that the action will not be free. The question So take this group. short you see but then it's played more carefully more boring to do that so well so what you do is the following so you take you concentrate only on the L's and you take the mirrors so it's L1 and this is the tubular neighborhood which is exchange exterior the, the, the exterior the, uh, <laughs> The exterior comes into the interior and the interior goes into the exterior, right? This goes into M1 and M1 goes into L1, right? So I take that one, then I take L2, so far on the LN. And by hypothesis, they are these joints. So I take simply P2L plus 1, 
minus this neighborhood that I'm going to call in I. Uh, take an open tubular neighborhood, so take the interior. What is that? Pantalon. Right? That's. You see, in the shopping case, it's exactly what it is. Do you agree? Okay. So this is a complex, complex, uh, complex third time. Okay, now the game is the following. When you apply L1, this is reflected here. And you have exactly the picture that you know so well from shocking groups, from the joint circles. Okay? So, I want try to, you have to imagine yourself, so you have these PNs like that, together with tubular neighborhoods, right? And these reflections. And then you build these three of pair of pants exactly like you do with surfaces, right? Same, same idea. Well, the union of all these, this is a fundamental domain for the region, right? And now, what will be the limit? These tubular neighbors are becoming, in the short case, they are circles, nested sequence of circles. And that's a dynamically defined And that's a dynamically defined PN plus one, right? This transverse this. All the, all the images of this. All this configuration into a fixed, another projected space. Right? But it's even better because if you see this configuration and now you do the same thing, see, these tubes can become very, 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 very deep. And therefore we can prove the following easily. If we take a, another in dimension of projected space and we do the same game, this will be transversely the boundaries of these tubes. Proof? Right? It's clear. That's the proof, right? But now we have, we have, you see, we have that, in fact, omega, mental domain, I will call this W, this union. How about W is beautiful, because W, which is across a manifold with boundary, W fibers over Pn, and what's the fiber? Well, you have the projecting line, pivotage, but you remove it, so it's simply, but it's exactly S2N plus 2 minus the interior of R this uh, minus the union of 2N plus, disk of dimension 2N plus 2, how many of them? I mean, open, but R. Okay, so you have this configuration, so the fundamental domain itself is beautiful. And now when the group acts, what do you expect? The theorem is that if you take the rigid of this continuity, take the stoop group of index two, which well yeah, even then the theorem is the following is that
well. Therefore, these new manifolds contain complex structure. Not only that, they have a projective structure because these manifolds I obtain by its very nature have an atlas whose quality changes are projective. These are the manifolds. There are manifolds that fiber with fiber connected from or spheres. And so part of the theorem, which I'm writing there has about six points. And then, well, I this is you see, because of the following reason, see, the house of it. So you take, and you ask yourself, what is the house of dimension? Well, but you don't think that way. You think It's approximately to very, very small. Two of these groups are. You have you have two copies of that, right? Well, what remains a billions of, of, of mirrors. Two configurations with no projective equivalent. At this point in particular, that if if you have that, Now you take the twist. I think that every every I can't include that, but I think that every deformation comes from just moving the moving the moving the configuration.
you could have complex expression from complex distribution, the formation of complex distribution. That would be like saying that all of these are tests, which are the things that are in the I have it for a couple. And also, I can tell you that you can also let the heroes intersect at like the moment of the next one. What you do the same thing in the shop, you need to say that I don't care. Sorry, I went too fast.